Hello and welcome to Cycle Second Chisel. We are here for our upper body pull session. So just as a reminder, check in with yourself. How have you eaten? How have you slept? Where are your stress levels at? And of course, where are you at in your cycle? Uh, I am in follicular, so again, energy is ramping up. So that'll be reflected in today's workout. Um, if we're synced up, awesome. If we're not, awesome. Just listen to your body. If you're right before your bleed, maybe pull back on that intensity a little bit, okay? Um, for today's workout, we'll start with happy puppy, foam roller or not. Um, we'll do a little bit of thoracic twisting. We're going to go into alternating single arm kettlebell swings. That'll be our dynamic portion. We'll just do a couple of straight sets of that, okay? Then we have gorilla rows. Um, I like to use a kettlebell for that, but you could use dumbbells as well. And then you definitely are going to want a lighter set of dumbbells for those rear delt flies. When I say light, I'm not talking fives right, but definitely not your heaviest for like overhead pressing, okay? Pretty much everything else you should be fine, so selection of weights. Heavy, light, good to go. All right, happy puppy. Coming down onto your knees. Palms are gonna be out in front of you. Whether on a foam roller or not, we're gonna roll on out and rise back up. If we're not on that foam roller, we're simply doing cat and cow with our spine but just in that happy puppy position. Beautiful. Exhale, belly goes towards the floor. Inhale, chest rises up. We'll go for about two more here. That feels so, so good every single time. <laughs> Perfect. Foam roller, if you are using one, can go off to the side. We're going to go ahead and extend our left leg out to the side, left hand behind the head, left elbow towards the floor, and then reach up and twist, heading into your rib cage, your thoracic rib cage. Beautiful. Two more. The last one on this side. Perfect, let's switch it on out. <clears throat> right leg extends out to the side. Elbow towards the floor, twist it up. Beautiful, three more. Good for two. And one. Let's finish off this movement prep with just a little bit of standard cat cow. So quad front position, belly goes towards the floor. Exhale, push your arm spine. Really think of separating those shoulder blades. Inhale, pull through. Exhale, push and round. Inhale. Exhale, push and round. Two more here. And then one more. Fantastic. Let's bring ourselves to a standing position. And before we go, last thing, just a couple arm swings to the front. And bring it backwards. And then other side to the front. So we have our single arm kettlebell swings coming up. Sometimes those are also called hand to hand because we're going to be alternating. If you don't feel, com feel comfortable alternating, feel free to just do six on one side, park it and then restart on the other side for six. Please make sure that you park it if you're gonna do that, okay? Work on that parking. All right, so again, it's a total of 12. I'm not gonna count the reps for you. Get your 12 in. Make sure that you're being patient with your bell. It's a hip dominant move, and it's generated, like we're trying to generate power from the hips. It's not really strength, it's power, okay? All right. Either hand to hand or six on one side, park it, six on the other. Here we go. Parking when you're done. Beautiful. Nice work, Lindsay. Good park. Yes. We pick it up when we put it down like a professional, right? That way, 
I always joke with my clients, my in-person clients, I want you to go travel, go to other gyms, and people to be like, whoa, she really knows what she's doing. That would make me <laughs> so happy. <laughs> Give yourself about 15 more seconds. <sighs> Powerful hips. Get that breath work. Keep the shoulders packed. Belly is nice and tight. Feet firmly planted to the ground. Second set. <sighs> As you're ready, take off. For those of you that are at home watching this on demand, make sure that you're not twisting your shoulder as you come through. You want to try to somehow stay nice and square, okay? All right, last time. Here we go. system on board, gets that heart rate up, beautiful work. Okay, now our first strength set, we have our awesome, one of my favorite, ways to row, gorilla rows. Weights are right below us, hips are low, okay, you want to still have your shoulders higher than your hips. Push one into the floor as you pull the other one up, okay. Then we have our forward to back, dumbbell or kettlebell pull through. So instead of side to side, we're going forward to back. We'll try to alternate the sides halfway through. So reaching out in front, pull it through, put the hand down, pull it back through, okay? I say you can alternate, like switch the direction halfway through, or you can switch it each rep, up to you, okay? Then we go into our rear delt fly. <clears throat> on our rear delt flies, I want us to pay attention to our rib cage. Try not to pop the chest each time you fly. Try to keep some connection to your rib cage and those little muscles right there. Try to knit those lower ribs together. Okay? All right. <clears throat> Gorilla row. Anywhere from six total to ten total, all depending on the weights that you're pulling. Okay? These should be fairly heavy. We're in a really supported position. <clears throat> Let's get the clock going. Again, we get that 45 second window to be working. Okay, we take off in 10. Kicking kettlebells hurts, don't do that. I just did. <laughs> we take off in five, four, three, two. Here we go. Once you finish your set, you get rest. Might be a lot of rest, and that's okay. If we're pulling really heavy, it's certainly okay. If you're still working, we have 15 seconds on the clock. If you want a little extra core work, you can come down and hang out in a plank position. We still have six seconds left of this set. We do have our 10 second transition period starting right now, so 10 seconds. On these pull throughs, get anywhere from five to eight per hand, per arm, per set, per side, however you want to think of it. Here we go. Full, a rep is back up to the top. From the top, through the center, back up to the top is a full rep. Try to keep your hips as steady as you can. We have 26 seconds. Again, at some point, 
switching the direction so that you pull down with the other hand, that you pull ahead with the other hand. Three, we have two and one. Beautiful work. That one takes up a lot of time, but it's in the intensity of it isn't too, too high, so that's okay. Three, two, here we go. Anywhere from 10 to 15, knit those ribs. We'll go into our 45 second rest period after this. We have five, four, three, two, 45 seconds on the clock right here. <sighs> Grab some water, swap out any weights that you need to. seconds. <sighs> Open chest, yet keep those ribs knit. Some connection to your core as you're pulling here. 10 seconds. Let's approach our weights. <clears throat> Drop those hips, belly is tight. Chest is up. Three, two, here we go. Okay. We know that this next one eats up most of the 45 seconds, right? If you want to come down to that plank for a little extra core, go ahead and do that. Seven seconds left of this set. Ten seconds before we begin. Burn through the cheeks, push through the feet, tension in your quads. Three, two, here we go. job. 10 seconds. Come on. We have four. We have three, two, and one. Woo. I feel like that one really builds up some heat. I like it. Flies. Three, two. Hinge. Belly is tight. Here we go. left in your recovery period. Think about the muscles that you're trying to work here on this last set. So on these gorilla rows, 
your lats, love those serratus as well, your rear delts, bit of rhomboids, belly is tight of course, okay, 12 seconds, oh they feel so heavy right now, chest is up, hips are low, four, three, two, here we go, yes you can, come on, work come on down to it we have five seconds left in this set we'll begin the next one in ten feet nice and wide quadriceps engaged lower belly pulled up and in three two here we go Stop, 10 seconds, come on. Oh, wow. Very, very good. Three, two, and one. Flies, last time with our flies. Take it off in four. Three, two, in, belly tight. We fly, keeping those ribs together. We 
you have 10 seconds. Beautiful work. Five, four, three, two, grabbing dumbbells across the body, hammer curl. Five, don't hit yourself in the face or the shoulders. Three, two, here we go. Exhale across, control it down. Think of the muscles that you're working. Put your mind there and into your breath. We have 23 seconds. Come on. 18 seconds. Keep it up. 15. That's it for me. <laughs> 10 more seconds. Close to grip bicep curl. So holding one weight really close together is the next one. We have four, three, two, and one. Again, I'm going to go into a sumo position, but you can do it just standing. Eight to 12. Three, two, here we go. So hard. Come on. Whoo! 25 seconds. Think two hands on a really heavy weight. What can you do with two separate weights? If you're curling 15s, that weight should at least be a 30. Okay? 12 seconds. Rest is coming up in five, four, three, two. And one. Absolutely. Yep. Kickstand, go heavier. Kickstand, go heavier. Yep, for sure. I'm not sure if in the recordings participants' questions come in. So Lindsay just asked, I can go lighter without a kickstand or I can go heavier with a kickstand. Go heavier. If you're losing your balance when you go heavier, go heavier, put that back foot down, okay? Because this is upper body pull. So I'd have that be your focus. All right, three, two, here we go. Exhale as you pull. Twenty-eight seconds. Nice job. We have ten seconds. Beautiful. Very, very good. Keep at it if you're still going. We have three, two, and one. Cross the body bicep curl. Five, three, two, exhale up and across. Nice job. Control it down. Quick up, control it down. So, so strong. We have 24 seconds. Find that edge, your edge, that point where it gets sort of ugly. Come on, 13 seconds. Close grip bicep curl is coming up next. We have seven left of this round of this movement. My wording was off there. Rest, transition. Close grip. In four, three, two, here we go. Come on. Twenty-five seconds remaining. 
all good if you're still working. Keep at it. 18 seconds. <sighs> 10 more seconds. <sighs> we have five. We have four. We have three, two, and one. I think today I'm going to share, I'm going to go find it again. I saw it this morning. I'm going to share this thing on the importance of the liver. So here we are. I'm encouraging you to get all your protein. So you get in three to five lifts a week to get adequate sleep, water, monitor your stress, all that kind of stuff. If you're still having constipation, diarrhea, a mix of both, PMS, acne, rosacea, uh, psoriasis, migraines, if you're having the things that we've all come to just basically accept as part of our lives, chances are maybe your liver is just not functioning correctly. Where do we start? I'm losing my mind. Single leg, <laughs> pull. We go in four, three, two, and one. Last time through, ladies, let's go. We'll talk about the liver at the very end. seconds. Beautiful work. We have four, three, two, one across the body bicep curl. In five, four, three, two, here we go. Get your weight. We take off in five. Mind muscle connection to your biceps. Three, two, here we go. How could something get so freaking hard? <laughs> it starts off kind of easy, but it just gets hard. 18 seconds. We're going to stretch. I'm going to start with the foam roller if you want to join with that. If you're still working, you have eight, five, four, three, two, and one. So, what we're actually going to do is we're going to do a really uncomfortable thing. Just briefly, you're going to lay on it right below your armpit. This is also very, very good for lymphatic drainage. So instead of rolling up and down, if you have larger boobs than I do, you might want to grab and pull it up and away from the foam roller just so you're not in pain every single time you roll to the front. And don't go to a point where you're squishing your boob and causing pain. Stop right before that. <clears throat> Um, okay, so let's talk about this. The liver. So yes, you could be an asshole. Treat yourself like an asshole, <laughs> like I have expressed I did over the last weekend through drink drinking. That's obviously not the best for our liver. Let's roll that foam roller up just an inch. Other things that are not good for our liver are literally in our lives every single day. So all of these endocrine disruptors disrupt our liver as well which then affects our hormones. 
Endocrine disruptors are everywhere. They're probably in the foam roller that we're on right now. They're most certainly in this mat that I'm laying on. They're in my clothes, they're everywhere. So one thing, let's switch over to the other side. One thing that can help assist your liver are castor oil packs. And I will tell you, I did one for about 20 days. I think it was in late November or early December. I had the best bowel movements that I've ever had in my entire life. I kid you not. My skin improved. I even put castor oil on this like hormonal patch of acne that I have. That improved. Um, I started it back up last night. Again, first thing this morning. Kid you not, the best bowel movement I've had in over a month. Something's not going right in my liver. And it could be, yes, the addition of, you know, holiday celebrations, whatever, but it's probably also the stressors of life, right? Just stress alone affects our liver. So as we are on this journey, we're going to flip and finish with happy puppy, but a nice static happy puppy. If you want to have your hands elevated on the foam roller, that's what I like to do. You can do so, or you can place your hands flat to the floor. As we go through this journey of trying to get stronger, trying to prepare our bodies for the next phase of life to make ourselves indestructible as we age. We've got to also keep in mind that our liver is working around the clock to help filter everything that we're coming in contact with. And again, including stress or lack of sleep or any of those types of things. So giving our liver some love. Milk thistle, castor oil packs, uh, dandelion root tea, um, I'll post, I'll reshare this little thing and maybe I'll also send it out in an email. It's not mine, but it's somebody else on Instagram. It was a really helpful little infographic on how to support your liver. You don't need to do detoxes. I'm not any, you want to do them, that's fine. You'll never hear me say like, let's do a juice cleanse. That's not me. No. If that's you, that's fine. I won't say that. I believe your body can do it on its own. But to support it with these other things is, I think, really, really beneficial. Okay, that's my rant for today. Much love. See you tomorrow morning, 6 a.m. Strong body, strong mind. Have a great day.